Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So I assume you're watching this because you have your own home workshop and maybe you watched several of my past videos of servicing a Vespa. And over all these years, everybody asks, where do you get those scissor jacks that are used to lift up the scooters? Uh, around my own service department, I have several scissor jacks that are pretty narrow in comparison. I tried several different vendors of the scissor jacks and I finally kind of narrowed it down to the best all around jack for the do it yourselfer. And today I'm gonna to show you how this works and how you can use it to better service your scooter. Uh, whether it's a Vespa, a motorcycle, anything, these are the must have accessory if you're doing service at home, especially if you don't have a standard lift that lifts the whole entire scooter off the ground like I use in many of my service videos and there's four lifts found in my workshop. Obviously, I don't expect the basic home mechanic to have a full motorcycle lift, much like if you work on cars to have a four post lift for a car. Uh, it's not just a standard garage tool that you'd find, but you'd find it in a professional environment. But as an amateur, these are the perfect thing to have along with the standard set of tools. And I'm gonna show you today how you can use this on a modern Vespa, several different ways to use this jack. If you're looking to buy this jack, uh, we have these priced affordably at scooterwest.com. Just search the word tool jack. Pretty easy, just tool jack, all one word, and you'll find the Vespa Motorsport branded scissor jack that's in our signature blue color that we have available. So let me show you how this works and some of the features of it. Um, you have this pretty large platform right here. I think it's about 13 inches wide by about 10 or 11 inches deep. Um, it goes up and down. You're gonna need either just a standard wrench. It is possible to turn this with a little wrench. Uh, if you just have basic hand tools, you will need a 21 millimeter socket and you can put that on the end. And pretty much you turn it clockwise to go up, counterclockwise to go down. If you're looking to do this a little quicker, you could certainly get a power ratchet. It doesn't necessarily need to be a snap-on ratchet. I don't recommend using air tools like an impact, air impact. They're pretty damaging on the Acme threads of these things. It does have the needle bearing or the ball bearing right here. Makes it turn real smooth and kind of as you use them, they get even smoother. But you can pretty much see you can quickly go up with the jack and that's at its maximum height. And it's very solid even at the high point. This jack is rated for 1100 pounds. Uh, a scooter doesn't even come close to that limit as with even most motorcycles. Um, and to go back down, pretty much just turn it clockwise and it will drop right down. So probably the most common use for this jack would be to change the front tire. Uh, the rear tire, not much uh, is needed to change the rear tire because on the center stand of, of most modern scooters is it kicks up the rear tire. On a vintage scooter, ironically, it kicks up the front tire and you need to jack the rear. But in the next video, I'll show how to use this with the vintage Vespa. So if you're a vintage Vespa fan, just hang on, I'll do the next video. So pretty simple to use on a modern Vespa. It's very flat under here. Uh, there's not much there. If you do have the side stand, it's kind of a little bit in the way. You just slide it towards the front part of the floorboards um, and just take care not to jack it too high because if you kick it off the stand, you could topple over the scooter. Uh, if you're unsure, I definitely strap the, um, the lift to the scooter and we'll show how that we would do that in a application where we may remove the motor and have to kick up the stand. So, so I'll set this to clockwise. Obviously it looks nice and easy when you have a power ratchet like this. And right when it makes contact with the scooter, kind of, you can have a friend kind of keep it. Wash the rear tire. 
So pretty much when the rear tire touches the ground, that's about as high as you want to go. Because right now it's like a tripod. It's very stable because this uh, platform is very large. It does have that rubber protective mat. But at this point, we can service the front end. We could pull the front tire off, pull the disc brake. Um, you'd probably do this over like a curb or suspend it over some type of ditch if you were going to drop the whole entire steering column. But that's pretty much how you would service the front, whether you're servicing wheel bearings, the front wheel, the disc brake system. Um, at this point, the scooter is very stable and pretty simple to, to use a jack just like this. So next, I'm going to show you how to lift the rear of the scooter. And we're going to want to stabilize the scooter a little bit more because it would be like a tripod. You're pretty much relying on this platform and the front tire to lift the scooter. So we'll drop this back down. So if you're looking to do a much more complicated operation of the scooter servicing, such as removing the engine, uh, maybe you're replacing the top end with a performance cylinder kit. Uh, maybe you want to service the transmission a little easier. Um, first of all, you need to secure the front end of the scooter because when you lift the rear, that's a much heavier uh, part. Oftentimes it will balance and it might still kick the front end up because the front end is so light. A couple ways to go about it. Um, you could do something as simple as this, find a big metal plate or maybe you have something bolted to the ground and you could just put, pretty much put a tie down through the front wheel and tie it down. Uh, if you're looking to do this pretty inexpensively, you could certainly go buy a cinder block at the hardware store and that would do the trick just as well. Uh, later, maybe after I do the vintage Vespa video, I'll show how to make a, um, a wooden uh, platform to secure the front end of the scooter. If you've ever seen my workshop lifts, you know, they have a clamp on the front of the tire and it will clamp the front tire and secure the front end of the scooter. So the best spot to lift the frame would be the rearmost section of the subframe. You still have access to your engine pivot bolt. So if we are gonna go ahead and remove the engine, uh, no issues there, but you can see this subframe kind of straddles the whole length of the scooter and you want to put your lift pretty much right underneath that. So it's going to make contact with the subframe and not the body of the scooter. And you can move it a little more forward if you and you can see it kind of contacts the first center centermost part of that that jack. And I'll show you at this point we'll start lifting. And eventually the center stand, right now, I can take it off the center stand. So the rear of the scooter is secured. You can see it's very stable with the front uh, clamp down. Say you're looking for extra stability when you're gonna be removing the motor, I'd recommend putting a towel across the floorboard of your scooter. So pretty much all these steps still apply if you're doing it on a GTS or many other modern scooters, you know, any other automatic scooters, they have a similar arrangement. I'd recommend putting a tie down through your jack. Make sure it doesn't entangle into the, uh, the wheels, but you could thread a tie down all the way around here. Go around your, uh, your floorboard with some type of towel or whatever you have to protect the paint. Maybe you have a scooter's all beat up and don't really care. You just put the tie down around it. Um, but you pretty much get the tie down set up, cinch it up, and if you have this tightened down, it's essentially the whole scooter is going to be secured to the, um, to the lift, and it's definitely not going anywhere. And that could be a moving blanket, anything like that. So you can see you could go very high with the rear end of the scooter. Uh, you can loosen the rear shock and you could go up or down with this lift depending on the location or where you need to set it. So a perfect application for this setup, if you're gonna lift the center like I have it here, scooter's very, very stable, especially with that front end clamp down and the tie down, uh, tying that lift to the, the scooter here. 
is when you change the oil, you can see the drain bolt is right here. How are you gonna get an oil pan right here? Because it's gonna drain all over your center stand. At this point, you can kick your center stand up and you have uh, easy access to your drain bolt. And the nice thing is the higher you get the scooter, the easier you'll be able to get the swing of a wrench uh, under here, the, the change of oil. So with a simple setup like this, with the aid of a scissor lift for your scooter, you're able to easily service the scooter. It's very, very stable without having a very expensive and large motorcycle lift. And again, you don't necessarily need a metal plate. You could do it with something like a center block or later I'll show you how to make a clamp for the front with just some basic wood parts. Um, tie downs, you can pretty much get these anywhere. Um, but the scissor jack, again, look at the Scooter West web store. Tool jack is the part number for this scissor jack. And I found this one to be the best one for the Vespa scooter. And we're not even close to using it at the maximum uh, height. You could lift it much higher if you needed to. Uh, this is pretty much as high as you ever need to lift it for anything that you do on the scooter, whether you're building the scooter from scratch or um, servicing the engine, oil, servicing the front tire, there's no need to really go much higher with it. So once you're done, make sure you kick your uh, center stand down before you drop it. That's pretty important. And, and just go ahead and drop the jack and remove your tie downs. So thanks for watching my video about how to use a scissor jack. And if you're looking to purchase a scissor jack, look no further than the Scooter West web store for tool jack. And we have these available. And like I said, I found this one works the best all around as a home mechanic scissor jack to do anything you need to do with either a modern or vintage Vespa. So look for the next videos coming up soon on how to use this with the vintage Vespa. We'll pull the motor out of the scooter and everything. I'll show you it. Um, this scissor jack that I used in uh, this video, obviously it's got some little marks on it and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna give it away. So the way you're gonna get it is unfortunately not a raffle on YouTube, but if you show up to the National Vespa Parade Day at Vespa Motorsport, on June 27th. So you can watch my prior videos that cover the parade day ride that we're doing now that we're winding down on this th crazy thing called a pandemic from 2020. Um, I'm only gonna raffle off one thing. I'm not gonna have an hour long old vintage scooter raffle where I raffle off 20 different things. Everybody that shows up, grab a ticket and I'll just call that one number, raffle this off and we'll be off on a ride. We don't have time for that. So you have the opportunity to get the first jack that I unboxed from our latest shipment of these scissor jacks, all branded Vespa Motorsport. And thanks for watching. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport in San Diego, California. And if you're not nearby, I sure hope you're organizing your own parade day ride. I've covered that in the prior videos. Um, if you're not looking to organize a ride, maybe look at Facebook and find out where the closest Vespa Parade Day ride is in your area.